cops in Buffalo, they had found a new nemesis, a rival who would push Rick James for the rest of his life, the artist known simply as Prince. Rick was the one who chose him to come out and open up on his tour because he was released from the Rolling Stones tour because they didn't care for him that much. Rick came to the band and asked, what do you think about Prince? Rick's thing was, when he was coming out, there was no Prince. Now, Prince had some records. Prince was a little softer, but that shit was funky. And that shit was completely different because a lot of white audiences came out to see Prince, and Rick was smart enough to realize that. Like, mm, okay, then we need to have this little kid on tour with us. This was his very first black tour. Black audiences loved Rick from the get-go. Different from Prince. The first time we met him, it was in Dallas. And uh, we found out that he was gonna be opening and whatnot, and hey, Rick said, here he comes. And I'm, I'm looking, and he comes in, and I'm, I'm still fucking looking, where is he? I'm thinking the cat's got to be like five, nine, maybe six foot tall. And this little bitty son of a bitch walks in there and said, God damn, he's tiny. He was down here. And he had on pink high heel fucking shoes. Stunning. That little dude, <laughs> that's Prince. <laughs> you know, us being so tall, I mean, he, he seems like a, a dwarf. But he was so powerful on stage, you know? I like the son of a bitch. He was funky as hell to me. But Rick used to get mad because I remember him saying, that little motherfucker got me working hard. Because he was a bad little motherfucker, man. He was funky. Every show, Rick was on the side of the stage watching Prince. Prince was on the side of the stage watching Rick. They both understood where this shit was about to go. I think Prince, if he was in this room, God bless his soul, he would say it. Prince would do his show, and then we'd do ours. And nine times out of 10, when we got finished with our show, People forgot who the fuck the opening act was. We used to kick his little ass every motherfucking night. I mean, we blowing up shit on stage, pyrotechnics and shit, bitches and whatnot. We had, we had ballerinas dancing shit for us, man. You can't do that. Damn, who was opening up? Oh, yeah, that was Prince. They both forget when we got through with that ass. Prince would push Rick to step up his game in more ways than one. Rick told me when I became one of the background singers that he was starting a female group. Joanne McDuffie was a part-time jazz singer and part-time record store clerk when she met Rick James back in their hometown of Buffalo. Female groups at the time, you know, there weren't a lot of them. The biggest thing that came down the pike at that point was the Supremes. Rick's idea was to create a group of women that were not wearing the same dress and the same gloves and the same wig and the same shoes. He said he wanted to create a female group. And I guess he put forth that idea to Prince, and Prince did it first. Prince produced the all-girl group Vanity Six. Rick, he's pretty pissed about that. But anyway, I became lead singer for the group that he produced, the Mary Jane Girls. Prince also started up another band around one of his childhood friends, The Time, featuring Morris Day. Rick answered with his own group, Process and the Do-Rags. Everybody in the house tonight who feels that you do what's right, put your do-rags in the air and wave like you just don't care. Whatever press we was doing, we had to do better. A lot of people don't realize that motherfucker had Rick working his ass off. I remember that 